Hey, what's up guys, Aaron here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23, my team career mode. This is episode number 39 today for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the season two finale. And it is a title decider between myself and Lando Norris and for the Constructors' Championship, this team versus Red Bull Racing. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, be sure to go check that one out before you see this one as it sets up, of course, how we go into this with only six points between myself and Lando Norris and eight points between ourselves and Red Bull Racing who took the lead at Jeddah. Let's take a quick trip down memory lane just to see how we got here in season two, kicking things off with the opening round down under at the Australian Grand Prix. Of course, it didn't start off in the best way possible with an engine failure, a DNF in our first race of the year. It was a 1-2 for Red Bull. Lando Norris was leading the way, but Verstappen was the one that actually got the better of the two Red Bull cars, and he won the first race of the year. That would be a bit of a smoke and mirrors in terms of how the season would play out, of course. As we now know, Verstappen really struggled with focus and momentum, and I still suspect a bit of it was to do with him losing the World Championship in Season 1 to Lewis Hamilton. Generally, we've seen sometimes when AI lose championship battles, they can take a bit of hit in performance or focus all round. But at the start, it was looking good for Max Verstappen, but that would sadly be one of very few great moments for him in this season. Carlos Sainz took victory at the Qatar GP for Ferrari. Once again, Ferrari and Sainz started this season very, very strong and it would be a similar pattern from season one, though, as they would fall away. Round number three, we took our first victory of the season at the Bahrain Grand Prix. A really well-controlled race from us and showed that this car really had some pace in it, especially early on in the year, that we need to make the most of it, need to get consistent podiums, consistent points if we wanted any chance to be in this fight this season. Lando Norris then took his first victory in Formula One and the Red Bull Racing at the Spanish Grand Prix after an interesting Spanish GP. A kamikaze move from Verstappen kind of took us out of the running and Lando was the beneficiary and put his mark on Red Bull Racing as we now know he would go on to really lead the team and be the spearhead for them all season. And from Spain we went to Monaco and it was Daniel Ricciardo's day in in the sunshine as he dominated the Monaco GP. On his return to Formula One this season, as we signed him as our teammate at the beginning of the year, he wins the Monaco GP. Of course, it's a fan favourite and it's a big favourite for him. And it was a massive, massive result as we got a 1-2 as well and took a commanding charge in the Constructors' Championship. And this was the start of Ricardo really performing for us as a teammate. Lando Norris, though, was back on top form at the Canadian GP, was just a a bit too quick for myself but we were still on the podium scoring good consistent results and that was the pattern for all of the mid part of the season between myself and Lando Norris. Lewis Hamilton would win his one and only race of his last season in Formula One as he retires at the end of this episode and in the first Portuguese Grand Prix of this series with Portimao returning it was another new winner for this season. Leclerc took the top spot and chucked his hat into the ring as maybe a dark horse. At this point it was hard to tell really who else could be in the championship fight. Russell took victory at the British Grand Prix. It should have maybe been us. It could have been us still with the performance we were showing after an early crash. We were coming back through. A safety car was going to help us out and then the F1 God said no, you really aren't going to score this race as we suffered another engine issue, a mechanical failure and we are out along with Carlos Sainz who got disqualified really Flipping the script for Ferrari there. Ricardo then won his second race of the season and became the leader of the team, in fact, in terms of race wins, as he won in Baku and the sprint race there as well. But it was more pandemonium for Formula One in the next race at the Italian Grand Prix, where Pierre Gasly won his second race ever at Monza with a last lap, last corner overtake on Leclerc to take victory for Alpine. For us, it was a 
podium there and needed as we bounce back from that horrid Baku GP with no points scored there and the car feeling very, very difficult. This was an important part of the season for us to turn things around because at one point I thought we made the car way too quick in a straight line and didn't have enough downforce to cope with it. But Monza showed we still had some pace in the car and all was not to worry about. But at the Belgium Grand Prix, much like Formula 1 always does, it's up and down and up and down in Spa. It was a downer for me as we had a first lap crash in the sprint and took us out. Alexander Albon went on to win the full Grand Prix again, like Gasly, with a last lap, last corner overtake. With Lando Norris suffering an engine failure in that race, a crucial timed one for us as we recovered from the back of the grid. Carlos Sainz won an electrifying Las Vegas Grand Prix with a red flag that saw my team put dry tyres on on a wet restart. Ricardo was leading for much of the race but had an engine failure. We then went to a wet and wild Sao Paulo and it was Spingate as Liam Lawson span his Williams and caused the safety car. Norris had stayed out. He was able to pit under the safety car and he went from being outside the top 10 to being in the lead of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Of course, Liam Lawson, although he's driving for Williams right now, he used to be a Red Bull driver. So I'm calling him Agent Liam Lawson. And if it really comes down to the points Lando got in this race, I will be severely peeved off. And it would be quite a controversial part of this season as there he is going into P1 and going on to win the Brazilian Grand Prix. That was a massive hit for us. We were set to win that Grand Prix, I think. We had been beaten in the sprint with a photo finished by Lewis Hamilton, but that race was ours up until that spin gate from Lawson and that Red Bull free pit stop. And in the second last race, Max Verstappen went on to win after Russell suffered a huge mistake from the lead of the race. Lando Norris struggled in that one and just came through for a top six finish. We had to come back from a grid penalty to try and limit the damage. At this point, everyone else was really out of the running. Leclerc was there mathematically up until Sao Paulo, but then really fell off the cliff. And it was just once again, the first two Brits who were leading most of the way of the season, ending the season as the two title contenders, Lando Norris, versus myself but could Verstappen play a part he wins his second race of the season at a crucial point where Red Bull have really come back and the constructors of course and they now lead the way actually because of Ricardo's poor race at Jeddah so I need Ricardo to show up and I need Verstappen to go back to his usual self from this season to it not perform because otherwise it's going to be quite difficult actually because Red Bull are quicker than us right now on the R&D chart and actually speaking about that we obviously bought an ultimate chassis upgrade to come in in time for this episode. Oh my god. This was the no-brainer. This was the banker. This was the one that couldn't fail. This was one that's never failed. But it has failed. It has failed. Our one and only final upgrade in what? The last four episodes has failed. I literally bought this because our chassis has the highest quality control and has very rarely ever failed us in terms of bringing in an upgrade. So that's great. Um, so we've literally plateaued for the last four episodes. We've, we've seen no upgrades. It's really been a brawn GP kind of esque season where we started off so strong after banking loads of points and we've been losing a couple of points in the last you know third of the season because of some poor performances bad luck and just the car not being there because we now go into Yas Marina without that upgrade Aston Martin thankfully actually the only car around us that have made a big upgrade so maybe Alonso and Albon will be a kind of spanner in the works Red Bull actually to be fair Red Bull annoyingly make a minor upgrade I can see there as we zoom in properly to the R&D portion right at the end of Abu Dhabi. So Red Bull do bring a small upgrade. We plateau along with Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes, etc. But that means Red Bull have got even quicker than they were in Sao Paulo, in Jeddah, which is very, very frustrating. We do lead the Drivers' Championship, but if Lando Norris is going for that win, we're six points ahead. It means we have to go for the win as well if he's going for the win. And in terms of the constructors, which is just as important, of course, it's my team. It's not just about the driver. It's a uh, us. It's about the team that we own as well. So we want to get that championship underway. And we're, we're losing points right now to Red Bull by eight. 
So myself and Ricardo need to score well. He needs to beat Verstappen. I need to beat Lando Norris. Um, and this is exactly the opposite of what we wanted, is Red Bull getting even stronger technically on paper going into this final race weekend. So are we going to be up against it? in this race i guess we're going to find out as we're going through qualifying and q1 might be a first inkling of uh, what's the oh no oscar piastri p1 for mclaren surprisingly but lando norris right up there in p2 myself and ricardo matching each other in p13 and 14 which is worrying you know it's fine if one of us is down there just a bad lap but the fact that both of us are down there is not great it could just be down to grip levels and just us not getting laps in i got i really hope it is but we're gonna have to find out now into Q2 and I'm hoping Q3 that both myself and Ricardo can get in. We have to. We, we have to, especially if Red Bull are both getting in there. Obviously, others will be a factor. You know, Aston Martin, they look quick. McLaren look very quick as well. Alpine uh, in recent races with Gasly and Ocon actually performing. So there's going to be a lot of different variables in this last race that are going to play into it, not just myself versus Lando. And it's not a great first flying lap for us in Q2 as we're in the drop zone. We're down to P12 as we're now finishing our second flying lap. Thankfully, it's going to be enough of an improvement. Four and a half tenths just about to pull us into the top 10 shootout. But it was looking mighty sketchy for a second there. But third place, that's a bit more like it. But oh, look at the pace Lando's got there. Three, uh, nearly three and a half tenths ahead of Fernando Alonso in second place. Thankfully for us, in terms of the constructors fight though, Ricardo's in and Verstappen's not. Verstappen has been knocked out in this final qualifying session uh, on the Saturday here in Yas Marina. Ricardo's through. That's okay. That's at least great for the team. Ricardo can outscore Verstappen. It's just down to me then to try and outscore Lando Norris. But that's a big if because that 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 the, the constructors and the drivers' championship maybe rides on that. As uh, well, he's looking mighty fast. Is there anything I can do? to pull out the bag and try and topple him. I'm not too sure, to be honest, as we're now on lap number two in Q3. We've done a first flying lap on a scrub set of tyres. So it was, it's a set I used in Q1. So it wasn't particularly quick. It's P9 here, but it gives us a yardstick to maybe measure. But at the moment, we're gaining three tenths on this lap. It's not enough. We need about five tenths at this stage, probably about six to seven tenths by the time we get to the end of the lap, as we're getting desperate, a bit too much curb on the inside there trying to get on the power early to gain a little bit more time through the last sector chucking it in up to six tenths gain lose a bit on the exit five tenths gain across the line what is it gonna be it is p6 that is not ideal and it's even more or less ideal with Lando Norris on pole position Ricardo's even out qualified me Ricardo's out qualified me um We've actually matched our times really well. So just showing maybe that's actually worryingly, maybe that's exactly where the car is in terms of the R&D chart uh, translating to around Yas Marina. McLaren look mighty. Piastri, the two, the two former McLaren teammates are locking up the front row. Our old teammate Piastri is on the front row with our rival, Lando Norris. Bottas and Hamilton, the old Mercedes pair, line up on the second row. Kind of nice, actually, because, of course, remember in season one at Yas Marina, Bottas literally helped out Hamilton and win the championship, his eighth championship that he can happily retire from Formula 1 with at the end of this episode. But for us, we share the row with Ricardo. Uh, at least he's miles ahead of Verstappen, which is good. But for us, we've got five places to make up to get towards Lando. And that's if we can do that first and foremost. And then what's the pace like? Because he's been three tenths clear in two sessions here. So that is a worry. It looks like our back is going to be up against it going into this final Sunday of the season. Let's go to the grid. So here we are, ready to go racing for one final time this year. Another season of victories, controversies and rivalries lies in our wake. And just one challenge remains here in the United Arab Emirates on a circuit that made its spectacular debut back in 2009. Welcome to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. The drivers will be racing here at the Yas Marina circuit through 16 corners and a lap distance of around 3.28 miles. There are a few opportunities to pass with long straights and DRS zones in two places. So plenty of close racing, then plenty of speed and plenty of drama to be found in the laps ahead. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And Oscar Piastri completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have 
Bottas, the owner driver, Albon, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Leclerc, Gasly, Sainz, Verstappen, Ocon, Hamilton, Magnussen, Ricardo, Liam Lawson, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Stroll, Perez, Joe, and Logan Sargent. And now it's time to head down to the track. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is none other than Anthony Davidson. They've had a fantastic campaign, a wonderful year, and they come into this weekend's Grand Prix as a fully deserving champion. I agree it's been a truly impressive season, but championship or no, I don't think they'll be gently cruising around to the finish line. In fact, with points no longer a concern, there's a lot less to risk, so we may even see a more aggressive approach. Well, 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 Daniel Ricciardo with a grid penalty, Lewis Hamilton with a grid penalty, and that's elevated us up to P4. We're on the second row now alongside Valtteri Bottas. I can see Lando ahead of us on the front row alongside Piastri. Uh, that's unfortunate for, uh, for the team, though. That's good for me individually, but Ricciardo is now you know, near to Verstappen, they're both now going to start outside the top 10. So he's going to need to, to make a comeback drive or at least make sure he just gets ahead of Verstappen at some point in this race. But uh, Ricardo's pain there is our gain, maybe as an individual for the Drivers' Championship. I really am hoping at this stage, as we line up behind Piastri, my old teammate, come on, do us a solid, fight Lando, hammer in Tong into turn one, get first place, away from him and uh, push him towards us. I really beg that's exactly what's going to happen here ahead of us. There's two championships on the line today, constructors and drivers. Both of them would be our first ever on this game. In terms of the constructors, I've just got to try and maximize my points and that actually feeds into my objective for the drivers' championship. We need to try and beat Lando Norris today if he's going for the race win as we go to five red lights. The Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is underway and the pole sit is a bit slow. Piastri does do us a favour. He's up into first place. The McLaren takes the lead. Bottas has had the opposite. He's fallen backwards and gone down to P5. Russell up into P4 but our old teammate Oscar Piastri does us a solid right there right in the first lap takes the lead Lando down to second place we're up to third and now we've got eyes on our championship rival Ricardo gaining positions already up to P14 he's got work to do Verstappen's P10 already in the points right now as Lando now goes for the lead of the race though the McLaren did so well Piastri he was electric off the line but the Red Bull looks to be just a bit too quick they jockey for position and that's going to invite me to do the double overtake. We've got Piastri, we've got Lando Norris, but the McLaren is going to come back at us as we squeeze the Red Bull to the inside. Piastri goes the long way around and says, no, I'll take that, thank you, and takes both of us once again. Piastri, first place to third, back to first place. What a sequence there as he locks up into the last sector. We almost have to go into the back of him as we're taking it very cautiously, not wanting to have an early incident here, but Piastri, a uh, fire, fire cracker of a first lap there all over the shot there but he leads the way on to lap three we're in second place crucially ahead of Lando Norris but we're going for the race win we want to feel comfortable here as we go for the move on Piastri the McLaren comes back at me in the break zone really aggressive there from Oscar as he pinches us to the inside as well meanwhile Norris actually thinks fighting for third place Russell's having a go at him so the Red Bull looked really quick on the opening lap but now in some dirt yeah, not so great as we do finally get past the Australian into first place. Oh, too much curb though. Way too much curb. It's a high profile mistake in a high profile race. And we're now down to third place desperately trying to dive back down the inside of Lando Norris. But he's going to keep second place. He's parked the car immensely there two times in a row under the hotel section to keep second place. And now he has another chance to get into the lead of the race. So in a split second, we went from loving life first place Lando third to now he's in first place we've just done a very lovely little switch to the inside there to get Piastri
Mystery, who was doing really well, but I feel like he's now struggling there. He's really fallen away. He's already one second behind us. And now it's all me versus Lando. We're going for it straight away. Big dive down the inside. Lando gives us the room on the inside. And we're going to be neck and neck nearly as we go through the next double right-hander. Jockeying for position inches between our two side pods. Lando on the inside. We're going to have the inside, though, for the next left-hander. And that will give us a nice, good squeeze out opportunity to get into first place but what a battle that was between two championship contenders for the race win in the final race it's what you love to see and oh it's a red flag red flag for what for what early red flag lap four really early red flag in this race and that's going to calm things down for a second and just reset us a bit that's going to be an interesting tyre choice, I think, you know. But this is why the red flag's out. The Alpine of Ocon spins into the hotel section. Oh, he crashes with Ricardo. Oh, no. I'm actually quite thankful now there's a red flag then. Ricardo's got damage. He'll be able to change that. But that's why there's the red flag. Look at that pileup. About five, six cars ghosting inside of each other. It's basically a track blockage, which has caused the red flag. Ocon just spins it. Ricardo crashes there. Very thankful now there's a red flag, because Ricardo can change that wing under red flag conditions. But that is why the red flag's out. Just a big pile up under the hotel section. But like I was alluding to just then, before we saw the replay, this is an interesting tyre decision, because, well, it's looking like my team are saying mediums to uh softs or maybe just hards to the end i'm thinking hards to the end because if there's if there's nothing else in this race then i don't think a two stop from here or a one stop technically from here is the way to go i think hards can go the distance there will be a bit worn at the end but you're just gonna have track position i'm gonna have track position if i can stay ahead of lando uh, it depends on what they choose as well. Depends on what Lando chooses. I'm hoping he's going to go hard as well. Otherwise, we may be in a pickle as we go to five red lights for this second time. He is on hard as his lights out. And we're away again in Yas Marina. And Lando's had a mare on the hard tyres. He's had a shocking getaway. He's down to P5. This is huge for us. The two McLarens on mediums are second and third. Yellow flags into turn one as someone has had an issue there. But we're into first place. We're flying away. And it's... Oh, what? It's a second red flag. Unbelievable. In the season finale, we've got two red flags. And Yas Mar I didn't think Yas Marina was that much of a chaotic one in the game, really. But two red flags. And this is why, then, off the five red lights... Oh, Oh my god. This, this is Verstappen's Red Bull, by the way. Verstappen suffers an engine failure off the five red lights. And you know what? It's not the first time this has happened to Red Bull. Remember the Bahrain Grand Prix where I won my first race of the season? Lando suffered an engine failure off five red lights off a red flag restart. It seems to be a Red Bull characteristic in this season. It's happened twice then. Two times more than Christian Horner would probably care to contemplate. And that's why the red flag's out, I think. is because Verstappen was just basically too dangerous parking ahead of everyone trying to park up and then this was the replay from his teammate our rival Lando just really poor start off the lights on the hard tyres the two McLarens were on medium so they got a really good getaway but even Russell managed to get off the line better on the hard tyres himself but now this is interesting because we've skipped ahead I think to lap nine of this race now on this second red flag restart and I'm looking at the predicted race time mediums one set of medium tires seems the quicker option so we're gonna go for that i'm gonna trust the maths i'm gonna trust the data as we start this race again and lando stayed on the hards the two mclarens have switched to hards as we go off the line once again from pole position but now we're the odd one out on the mediums, along with Russell. Ironically, me and Russell were on hards, and we've now gone to mediums. And the two McLarens, vice versa, have swapped round. So everyone who started on the hards on that first restart has now changed their mind. As we're in first place, Russell said... Oh, it's a safety car. How much chaos is happening in this race? We've hardly even got that much racing gone in this season finale. It's a safety car, and it's because there's a Haas 
that careers into the back of the Alpha Tower. And you know what? Ricardo was only one car ahead. That could have been nasty. Thank God Ricardo wasn't caught up in that. He's P11. Verstappen obviously is DNF. I didn't even celebrate, to be honest, about that. That means if Ricardo just gets a couple of points, he's doing his job. He's already, I think, in P11. So he's just got to make like one or two overtakes. And I'll be happy with his job today, just collecting one or two points in the championship versus Verstappen, who is now DNF. So he can't get any points in this. And for me right now, we're in first place as we get underway once again on lap 12 this is Lando's in P4 he's on the hards along with the two McLarens I'm really hoping that me and Russell and the mediums can just pull away from those hard tire runners and actually more so the McLarens they look really quick maybe in that sandwich Lando's just going to get stuck in the papaya sandwich and uh, just not really bother us. That would be the ideal thing as uh, Russell is all at the back of this though. So even though I want me and Russell to pull away, Russell has, have, has other ideas. I think he wants to be the leader pulling us both away as the Mercedes gets in a drag race with us late on into the straight. The ERS kicks in for us, but Russell is down the inside. We're going to be very careful about this. Don't want any damage because we're in a very good position right now. Like, I don't need to take risks. Lando's behind us. He's not even ahead of us, so it's not a case of, you know, damage limitation. We're actually just in a really good position, so let's just not do anything too rash as we stay in first place, and we continue to stay in first place. On to lap 16. Three laps later, Russell has been keeping us honest this entire time, but he's now going to go for another try for first place. This time, he's on the outside. Oh! Little bit of contact made as we went a little bit too late on the brakes, trying to squeeze him. Thankfully, no damage there or anything more as we stay in first place and Russell's actually so slow off that chicane that here comes Valtteri Bottas the flying fit he loves Abu Dhabi doesn't he he really got himself into the title fight last season with Hamilton v Verstappen he's got himself back into it here maybe with myself and Lando as he's up into second place as we now watch Daniel Ricciardo this is on the next lap he's in P10 so he's already got one point here but he's having a look at Piastri and Gasly Piastri he's fallen quite away from the lofty heights of P1 earlier but but look at Daniel Ricciardo. Oh, come on, Rick Bobby. It's the double overtake, is it? On the outside, into sector three. Ricciardo is going to get P8. What a move. What a move. That is brilliant stuff there from Ricardo. Two places for one, and that's a good load of points versus uh, Verstappen with zero. And of course, myself in first place, we're looking good for the constructors. And at the moment, at this moment in time, we're looking good for the Drivers' Championship. But we've got pressure for this race win from the Flying Finn. Bottas into first place. That DRS of that McLaren is so powerful. Even with ERS, it's so hard to fight him. At oh, no. Lean mixture. At the worst time, Bottas has just overtaken us. Russell's a whisker behind us. And now we've got a lower power engine mode. The fuel mixture really does affect your speed. We try our best to outbreak Bottas and try and just use the rest of the car performance to fight him. But on the exit, look at the power he's got. And he just nips ahead of us. And I don't have the confidence to go down the inside there because we know the McLaren on the, on the, on the hard tyres now. Actually, at this stage, we'll have better grip. All the hard tyre runners will start to have better grip than myself and Russell on the mediums. That will be wearing out as we go on through the laps in this race. But thankfully, the engine issue has solved itself onto lap 23. We've got fuel mixture back, and now we can come back at Valtteri Bottas, who goes very defensive to the inside there. We've gone down to single digits on the battery. We outbreak ourselves a little bit, quite deep into the corner, but Bottas actually really doesn't give us much of a fight there, surprisingly. And we get back into P1. Bottas actually has a bit of a mare of an exit and uh, may even fall foul of Russell, who's coming back in this race. Yellow flags head. Look at how quick the McLaren, though, is with DRS and the Mercedes car. Russell nipping on the inside, trying to make his own double pass of that corner a la Daniel Ricciardo from earlier. Russell into second, but Russell is really going for first place. He wants the victory, almost the victory that got stolen away from him at Jeddah as he was leading for most of that last race. And here he comes again, lap 24. And now behind, I can see Norris is also going for the move on Bottas. This is very, very crucial. We need to re-overtake Russell because if Lando's right there in P3, 
That's going to be a little bit tense. It's squeaky bum time. We need to get the Mercedes just to feel more comfortable. I need that one car buffer just to feel comfortable in this race for the Drivers' Championship as we are still trying to make this move. But Russell is so good in the corners. The Mercedes has some great acceleration. Maybe his tyres are a little bit better sitting back previously. And Russell goes right round the outside. We're still side by side, neck and neck. As we go now under the tunnel, Russell is not going to give us any room. He's going to tap us, in fact, and give us some damage to the floor. Russell, there was so much room on the inside there. There was no way he had to make contact with us, and yet he has. And now we've got floor damage. Thankfully, Bottas re-overtook Lando, so he's in P4. So there is some breathing room there, but I'm not, I'm not convinced Russell had to make contact with us to keep that fight in. As we're watching a replay, this is just a good bit of battling there as we're so, so close to making contact there. We get very, very close, committed through here. I mean, Russell using all the cur curb in the world to go through there. But then look at this. I give him so much space to just keep it tight and yet he understeers into me. It's a racing incident probably because it's just, yeah, he, just, he literally understeers into me but it doesn't make it any less annoying. But Lando here fighting Bottas, there was a bit of contact there, you know, between the Red Bull and the McLaren. And I think there's a bit more contact coming up because I say that because Lando looked a bit slow in the last sector, you know, is, oh, look at Albon coming out of nowhere. The Aston Martins have been, been a bit quiet in this race to say that they brought big upgrades into this one compared to everyone else. Bottas threw into third place, but look how quick he is off that corner. It's almost like Lando's limping a little bit with some damage, and I wonder if it was from that bit of contact with Valtteri. Has Bottas again affected a world championship on this game, in this series, on this channel? Because now Lando is nowhere near to him, and he's falling into the clutches of the Aston Martins, as Ricardo, that is, though, we're focusing on, is looking to make an overtake on Leclerc to get up into P7. Come on, Ricardo, bringing out the big guns for the last race, doing as much as he can for the team for the Constructors' Championship. He's going to overtake Leclerc and get up into P7. But look at where Alonso and Albon are. They're close together. They're fighting each other. But now, on lap 26, Alonso is right up behind Lando Norris. He's definitely picked up some damage from Bottas there, I think, because he is definitely not this slow. He was so quick in the first part of the race. He's on the hard tyres as well, so he's not got tyre wear. I mean, everyone else around him is on hard. So that is just a bit of damage I think, because the Aston Martin of Albon uh, is now on the back of him. Alonso has already overtaken him. And if he's not, if he's not uh, careful, he actually might be just one place ahead of our teammate, Ricardo, as Albon goes round the outside and easily... Oh, he's got damage. He's got... The way he overtook him just there in the corner, I, I'm, I'm convinced he's got damage. The two Aston Martins, P4 and 5. Ricardo's P7 just behind... Oh, what the... Ricardo was just behind Norris in P7, but he's coming to the pits. He's coming to the pit. What? Ricardo? No, he's picked up his own damage. Clearly, uh, way more than Lando, because Lando's not coming to the pits. Ricardo comes in. Is this legitimately for damage, or is this a tire well or something? Is he comes in? I know it's a front wing change. He's got damage. Ricardo is going to be out the points. Lando runs in P6. We're in P2. I don't know what the maths is. I think we've still got enough points to win the Constructors' Championship, but I don't want to leave it to chance. So with three laps to go, we're in P2. We're only half a second behind Russell. We're going to dig deep and try and go for this race win with floor damage, with tyre wear, but I think Russell is suffering from more tyre wear than I am as we get down the inside. It's oh so close again. We're basically rubbing side pods, but we do the Nico Rosberg switchback of dreams here. A little bit iffy on the rear end. We make contact with Russell. To be fair, he was a bit aggressive with us, so it's our turn to be aggressive with him, and we let him know we're there on the outside. Russell to the inside, but we have the move, maybe. No, Russell's come back at us. That Mercedes is way too good through that left-hander, and he's still there, but we're going to get to the racing line. We're going to park the bus on the inside apex, and this time, we learn from our uh, mistakes, and we don't let Russell keep the inside line there, and we get back into to P1 and I think Russell really is suffering a lot of tyre wear compared to myself we've taken it a bit easier, we've, we've got tyre wear as well but I think that Mercedes is actually chewing up its tyres because the Aston Martins are right behind and Bottas
Bottas comes in. Bottas is in as well. He's got damage, is it? Or tyre or, or something or other. But the Finn is in the pits. So actually, it's doubly good I went for the win then. Because if I had been second place and Lando finished in P5, I think the maths would have been... You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Red Bull would have been level on points with us in the Constructors. And on number of wins, that would have meant Red Bull would have won the Constructors' championship, I think. So even more crucial then that we made that overtake for the race win. The chess pieces are coming off the board right at the end of the race. Ricardo in the pits, Bottas in the pits. It's three wide between the Mercedes and the Aston Martins. Is this the changing of the guard as Aston Martin duped Mercedes? And it's the Aston Martin Honda up into second and third place. Alonso second, Albon third, Lando Norris in P5 hobbling along. So as a driver into this last sector, we can breathe a bit of sigh of relief as we're going to enjoy this last sector to come through for our first Drivers World Championship on this game. But it's still a bit tense for the constructors, you know. Alonso is rapidly catching me. If he gets first place, we may not win the constructors and we might not get the first title for this team. Alonso rapidly gaining. These tyres have gone off the cliff into the final corner. We're wide. Alonso down the inside. We crossed the line just and with yes, that another yes. year of formula one to a close this? and a new it's a driver's champion yes. is declared another entry added to that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers victory today then but bittersweet emotions i'm sure as the championship slips through their fingers even so what a fantastic final race of the season this was well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. We did it. We did it. Just, just. Alonso, mere couple of tenths behind us in P2 there. My God, that could have been another smash and grab win for an AI. But we got the win, our second win of the season to win not only the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, but the Constructors World Championship and the Drivers World Championship for the very first time on F1 23. The first time of asking in season two makes a difference to the last two F1 games, F1 22, F1 2021. Both times I failed to win the championship in my first ever title fight. This is the first time I've done it in three F1 games. It's actually been quite a while since I've been this consistent and brought it home in the last race to say. It was a bit of help from Valtteri Bottas. Once again, he got himself stuck into a title fight, uh, you know, getting in, in amongst it. But we've done it. 21 points in the end above Lando Norris. I think, to be honest, we deserve that commanding lead to end it with because we were really consistent in the middle part of this season. You know, multiple podiums in a row. And for the team championship, oi, 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 it was close. Seven points there. Literally, if I lost second, if I lost first place there, Red Bull would have won it on count back on number of wins, I think. So we just about held on to that construction this title for Arava Archer Racing. Guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, nay, the entirety of Season 2, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.